Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm give all praises and glory unto Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhadash. The honors unto the apostles and the elders, a great millstone. Peace and salutation to the Akiyam, to the elect that are scattered across the four corners of this earth, pushing the truth out in faith and in sincerity. And I'm Brother Shemala from the GMS Houston camp. And this lesson I'm going to be going into Wisdom of Solomon, the 13th chapter. Now, if you don't know, this book is found in the Apocrypha, which the Apocrypha is a part of the scriptures. Um, newer versions of the Bible have removed the Apocrypha. But if you get older versions, you know, preferably the um, the King James 1611, the Apocrypha was in it. Right. So, yeah, this is where I'm reading from. And um, my aim, you know, um, is to, what I'm aiming for, Going through this whole chapter, you know, we see where the spirit takes me. So uh, without further ado, start at the top. This is um, Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 1. It says, Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the Most High and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is, neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster. But deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be gods which govern the world. So you got people that will see the sun, they'll see the moon, you know, stars, and basically different things on the planet Earth, and they will worship these things as God because of its beauty. The next verse will say that, which is beauty, as they being delighted, took them to be gods. Let them know how much better the Lord of them is, for the first author of beauty had created them. So they look at these things and, and worship them for their beauty. And they basically made gods out of the things that the Most High created. And they, and they, uh, just like you have, what is that? Uh, that's Islam. They got the little moon thing on the um the little moon symbol on their little um headbands or shirts or whatever it is they be wearing. Right. You have um people when they go to church on Sundays, they don't know that it goes back to the worship of the sun. So, you know, these things have always been going on. And I believe it was um Ishmael. Right, they would um they basically would have a God for each day, each day of the year. And the heathen, you know, they always worshipped nature and this and that. That's why the Lord wrote this. Well how Jeremiah well actually Baruch wrote it. Um it says Jeremiah ten and one, hear ye the word which Yahweh was speaking unto you, O house of Israel. Thus said Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So the heathen will look at the things in the heavens, right, all things in the planet Earth, certain animals, and they will basically make gods of these things. So you got all people that's following behind this as well. Then they will look at these things and call them gods. Right? But it says, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty had created them. So something had created these things. But they don't come to that real realization. They don't come to that type of understanding. They give all the glory to something that was created or something much greater. Instead of acknowledging the most high. Acknowledging that there is a God. This is um Psalms 14 and 1. The, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none to do it good. So you got people that don't believe that there is a higher power, but they worship these things. And you got certain people that, you know, kind of do believe 
It is a higher power. You see, but they still put a lot of emphasis and a lot of worship towards these things that the Heavenly Father created. It says, but if they were astonished at the at their power and virtue, let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them. Right? The Lord is much more mighty and powerful than all of these things. You know, you get um people amazed by the sun, how hot it is, you know, uh, and you know, all these things, the, the the look of it and all of these different things. The Lord, how the Lord creates things and create animals and you know what not. Hey, the Lord, if he can create something like that, then, you know, what do you think that he is? If somebody can even form something like that, how much power do you think that he got? It says, for by the greatness and beauty of the creatures, proportionally the maker of them is seen. So, yeah, you see the Most High. The Most High shows himself through his creation. You'll see certain animals, they'll have certain... um. Like their skin will be designed a certain way. Like you, you have the leopard or you had a butterfly. You have these different animals. You can tell that, that man, hey, like it looks like an author. I mean, an artist, you know, had designed these things. Hey, certain things just be like, man, man, that's beautiful. It says, but yet for this, are they less to be blamed? For they... Peradventure, error seeking the most high and desires to find him. So, our people, they have, they, they, they know, because they are Israelites, right? They are seeking for the truth. So, we're seeking for the truth or seeking, you know, for the most high, you know, unknowingly, they go through these different avenues and routes, you know, from worshiping all these different things. Right, seeking the truth in the most high unknowingly. And it says, for being conversant in his works, they search him diligently and believe their sight because the things are beautiful that are seen. How be it? Neither are they to be pardoned. For if they were able to know so much that they could aim at the world, how did they not sooner find out the Lord their rough? Right? You got people that go like real deep or try to go deep. The sun, the moon, and the stars. This is this, and that is that. You can watch a video, right, of our people, right, which I'm talking about the Israelites, which are the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, right? They they search, they search out these different philosophies and things of that nature, right? They go deep into it, right? As far as the things that were created and this and that. So you you can go that deep, but you can't come to the realization that the Heavenly Father created these things. That's why you can't be blamed. Right? Because the the things that are seen in the heavens, the things that are seen in the earth, you cannot deny that the Heavenly Father is real. And right? you cannot deny him just off of that. Right? Just off of our body structure. How the body works, the immune system, the senses, you know, babies, how they grow inside of a womb. All of these things, it's like shows you that the Heavenly Father is real because, hey, not only, not only are animals in, you know, um, the things in the heavens, right, referring to the sun and moon and the stars and things of that nature, those are not the only thing that worship. You have people that worship women and look at them as gods. But the Heavenly Father created them as well. Right? Say that because the woman gives life and this and that. No. The life and the spirit or well, the spirit was already created by the Heavenly Father. And the Lord will have that life inside of a man's, he could put that life inside of a man's sperm. And he puts that inside, well, the man and the woman have sex. And then, you know, that that the sperm goes to the egg and, that, and, that, and, the, and the baby grows. 
The Lord forms all of that. So there's nothing really, the Lord is using us just to bring that 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 spirit to a um to his fleshly nature. Right? So all things come from the most high. Right? But the, of course, the life starts with the, the sperm and the man. It says, but miserable are they, and in dead things is their hope, who call them gods, which are the work of man's hands, gold and silver, to show art in, and resemblance of beasts, or stone good for nothing, the work of an ancient hand. So, you know, a lot of people worship these gods and these different idols, right, that don't exist. It says that a stone good for nothing. Somebody can take something, you know, some type of object or a wood like this chapter is going to go into, and they can just turn any old thing into a God and start praying to it and worshiping it. You got people worshiping statues, right? people worshiping, you know, um, rocks, stones, They're worshiping different artifacts. People worship themselves, right? but more so this is going into, you know, turning things into gods. Because, um, like, I, um, I believe I mentioned this on my last lesson, that, you know, Israel, when it came out of Egypt, when they got into the wilderness, they made them gods. And it said, these be the gods that basically that delivered us from Egypt. So they always kind of had that in them to, to do shit like this. And the wicked of our people, of course, because the elect of the chosen ones are not gonna are not gonna fall away with those things. Right? We're waking up from those things in these times and cleansing ourselves from abominable works. It says, Now a carpenter that fell a timber after he had sawn down a tree meat for the purpose and taken off the bar skillfully round about, and then wrought it handsomely and made a vessel the real fit. For the service of man's life. And after spending the refuse of his work to dress his meat, had filled himself. So this is going into a man that cut down a tree. You know, um, men, you know, you had to build things back then. And you had to put that work in. And you, when you're putting that work in, you know, you, you, you cut the tree, you got to take the wood and you got to form it into whatever you're going to form it into. Maybe building a house, shed, cabin, you know, whatever you had to whatever purpose that you had, right, for that for that wood. Right? He says, and after spending the rest of his work to dress his meat, had filled himself, and taking the very ref refuse among those who served to no use, being a crooked piece of wood and full of knots, and had carved it diligently, and when he had nothing else to do, and formed it by the skill of his own understanding and fashioned it to the image of a man. So this is, this is the problem. And when people form these idols and not knowing that the, you are forming this based off of your own logic, based off your own understanding, right? It's the most out and gift that you with. And you are making something, you know, way less than you. You are worth more than what you are creating. And it's you are fashion, it says, and fashioned it to an image of a man. But it's not that. It doesn't have life. That's why it makes you greater than what you are creating. So that whole process of the idol worship and this and that is just a, it's corruptible right? and evil and foolish. It says, I made it like some vile beast, laying it over with vermilion and with paint coloring it red and covering every spot there. And so this whole thing is being designed by someone. Someone is trying to make a God or something to be worshipped. But it can't be something, you can't worship something that that you had to create. Right? That's like you, you make a shoe, and then you say, Oh, this is this is my God. Yeah. You made it. So it's, if you if you can design something beautiful, it's basically that's showing your greatness. But the thing that is the designer is worshiping the thing that was designed. That's that's backwards. <laughs>
Like it's like we were created by the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father don't worship us. He didn't create us and worship us. Because what sense does that make? We worship him. Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. Okay? It says, and when he had made a it made a convenient room for it, set it in a wall, and made it fast with iron. But he provided for it that it might not fall, knowing it was unable to help itself. For it is an image that had need of help. So you got to pin this thing to the wall, nail it into the wall, because he knew that look, it, look, he can't hold up itself. This is a piece of wood that I didn't form, that has no life. So I got to hang this thing up. So how could it be a God if you had to put all this energy into basically setting up everything? It says, then make he pray for his goods, for his wife and children. And it's not a shame to speak to that which had no life. So something that he just created. Now you're praying for everything. You're praying for good success. You're praying for, you know, safety and protection for your family. From something that you just formed out of nothing, out of wood. It says, for health, he calls upon that which is weak. For life. Prayer to that which is dead. For aid, humbly beseech it that at least means to help. And for a good journey, he asks of that which cannot set a foot forth. So you're asking for all of these things. And these, these idols and these gods that you're praying to can't even do anything for themselves. The thing that you are asking for. These other scriptures, they even, they even say you knock, let's say you got someone formed an idol or a statue, right? A little small little statue, whatever you knock it over, it can't it can't do anything. It can't pick itself back up. You gonna have to go pick it back up. When you want to move to another location, let's say you move to another house, you gotta carry that. Somebody cursing at the idol, or oh, this this and now I don't believe in your idol. The idol can't do anything about that. The idol can't def can't defend itself. The idol can't defend you. It says. And for gaining and getting and for good success of his hands, acts his ability to do a film that is most unable to do anything. So these gods can't do nothing. But people give glory unto these things. And they don't show or give the Heavenly Father his due credit. Because the Heavenly Father exists and is truly the only God. The Most High. I wish I made this statement, John 17 and 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Yahweh Shah Mashiach, whom thou hast sent. So it's only one, one, one power, and he has a son, Yahweh Shah. And so this is what we came out of in the world. So if you are somebody that's on this, you need to snap up out of it. Because the Heavenly Father is clearly seen through the things that were made. Right? Buddha, Allah, right? all of these different gods didn't create the heavens and the earth. These different gods didn't bring the flood. These different gods didn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, destroy Egypt. The Most High's work, right? He, he is known for that work. He is known for those judgments. Uh, in and off on that. Psalms 9 and 16. Yahweh is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Right? What work has Allah put in? What work has Buddha put in? What work has these other gods put in? We don't know of them because they don't exist. They're simply just a figment of people's imagination. But the most high is going to be exalted in due time. Hope this lesson was edifying. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.